Historically, industries like mining and construction have been left out of the digitization era. But that's something our next speaker says will no longer be the case, thanks to artificial intelligence. Yvonne Wassenaar is CEO at Airware, where she focuses on digitizing the physical world with drones to allow industries such as mining and commercial insurance to benefit from modern day technologies like cloud, machine learning and AI. This, she says, is allowing previously forgotten industries to take advantage of AI in new and interesting ways. Please welcome to the auditorium, Yvonne Wassenaar. Hi, my name is Yvonne Wassenaar and I'm the CEO of Airware. I'm excited today to share with you how drones are unleashing AI in the most unexpected of places. Over the next 30 minutes, I'm going to take you on a journey. A journey where you're going to see how drones are fundamentally changing the world we live in by digitizing that world and bringing it into the cloud where new technologies such as machine learning and AI are bringing insights and impact to customers all around the globe. These are businesses such as property management, but also construction and mining. Let's begin. This is an open pit mine. They're typically found in the most remote of places, far away from populated towns. This particular ore zone extends over 1,800 meters. It's 244 meters in width and 183 meters in thickness. To take a look around and see what it feels like to be on a mine, the truck you see driving carries a 400 ton load. And these trucks drive around, picking up, shoveling dirt, processing it, in and out, all around 24 seven. These machines are so large, the tires can be six feet, 13 feet high. They can cost 60,000, $100,000. Some of the equipment is so big it needs to be built on site. And as you can see, it's not with all the dust and dirt, the place you'd typically expect to find digital technology. In fact, here's a view of what goes on at a mine. This is a very common blasting activity. They use seismic activity to move rock, to shovel it, and to move it away. In a given year, a mine might dig up 136 tons of material, process 10 million tons to produce 1.2 million ounces of gold. So there's an incredible volume of material that has to be moved and processed. And you might be wondering why are we talking about all of this in the context of artificial intelligence? And that's what I'm excited to share. Let me tell you why. Because there's this amazing device called the drone or an unmanned aerial vehicle. Many of you know that this is not really much more than a flying robot. But what we're gonna talk about is how that flying robot is now enabling us to get to new insights and new benefits. So let's take a look. Some of you may have had drones as toys or drones as military vehicles that are doing operations around the globe. But what has shifted are drones such as these, the EV, this, that's a fixed wing drone, or the DJI multi-rotor drone. These are drones that are now advanced enough that they're easy to fly. You don't have to be a commercial pilot anymore. They're maneuverable. You can fly them around all different types of structures. They have battery lives that allow you to extend and take large swaths of information in. And what you may note is you can see a camera hanging from the bottom of that DJI drone. And that's a really important part of the story because not only is it the drone's capability that has evolved, but it's the sensors that the drones carry. Now, back in the day, we had a customer who actually duct taped an iPhone to the bottom of a drone to get imaging to measure a stockpile.
But as you can see here, drones can carry thermal sensors. Here we're doing a thermal image of a rooftop. That information can all be brought up into the cloud, but you can do imaging of all types. And as both sensors evolve and the drones evolve, what we can capture and bring into the cloud to analyze becomes more and more sophisticated and meaningful. And in fact, it is what enables us to create what I call the digital job site. As you can see from this illustration, you now have the ability to measure, to scope out, to understand, to integrate, to compare over time, quite frankly, what's happening. And what's interesting is, before the cloud became a popular tool by businesses, companies would fly drones and they might find themselves, one of our customers ended up with 600 terabytes of drone data in the corner of their office. It was meaningless. It was sitting on storage drives unused. But with the advancements of the cloud and the cost of storage falling, you can import all of that data up into the cloud where it can be shared and collaborated on, but most meaningfully, where it can then have AI and machine learning applied to it. So let's take a deeper look. This shows you what we're able to create in the cloud. We ingest hundreds, if not thousands of images. We then stitch them together to create 3D models, such as the one that you're looking at. This 3D model can be manipulated it can be turned, it can be measured, it can be converted into 2D at intense detail. Each point you see in this wire mesh is a measurement with an X, Y, and Z coordinate. It allows us to now visually visualize this not only in three dimensions, but in two dimensions and do meaningful measurement. And what's beautiful about this is the average surveyor who used to draw up images of a mine in the past or a construction site or a quarry, they would measure every few meters. We are able to, with the drone, with the, the quality of the cameras, get down to a one to three centimeter measurement in terms of just creating the geospatial coordinates. We can get down to the fragmentation in millimeters on a rock. Very, very powerful. But let me show you what we do with this. This is an example of how you might measure a stockpile. In the past, you would have to take somebody to physically go out, climb the stockpile. It could be dangerous. It could take many days. They then have to take manual measurements. Here, we're able to do all of it digitally. We can measure it digitally. We can create meaningful reports that show you the amount of volume and area material moved. This allows people to not only account for what's changing on their site financially and meet compliance regulations, it also allows them to ensure they have the right materials when they need them, where they need them, and that they can operate more effectively and more safely. You're not sending people to the top of the stockpiles anymore. And what you see on the screen right now, this is an export that you can put into any ERP system. So we're able to take multiple steps of manual process out to actually get to a much more efficient way of business. Here's another example. These are haul roads. So remember the big trucks? They drive along roads. And where you see yellow on this chart, that means the grade of the road is too steep for the optimal performance of a truck. These trucks, whose fuel cost can often make up 20% of the overall operating cost of a mine, they're optimized for a certain grade of road. We have the ability to now digitally measure those roads after storms, after changes on the site, tell you where the repairs need to happen and allow you to much more efficiently run the site and get more out of the vehicles that you have. But most importantly, to be able to produce more at, at greater efficiency using less of the world's resources for the same outcome. Safety is also greatly enhanced by these capabilities. Here you can see the little dots, those are safety blocks. Those are big rocks or boulders put on the side of a road or here a high wall, we can measure those. 
And the reason why you want to know is your high wall too tall, like those yellow and red lines or not, is you don't want these collapsing when you have people walking through the mines or vehicles going by, or perhaps there's some seismic activity and something is too tall and unsettled. Fatalities and injuries happen all the time. And many mines, if not all, and their earnings call will tell you that that's a top priority fix. We can help people fix that now digitally in telling them where they need to replace their safety blocks, improve their high walls, to bring about better operations in a digital enabled world. But we haven't yet talked about what you all are most interested in. Machine learning, artificial intelligence, and more. Now that this data is in the cloud, we have the ability to apply all these new technologies as well. These are some of the technologies that I'm gonna talk through now. The first, somatic segmentation, deep convolutional neural networks, generative adversarial networks, digital terrain modeling or DTM interpolation, geographic information system simulation, and deep learning models. We use all of these techniques to help us gain greater insights, greater precision in the work that we can do in many different industries. Let's start with semantic segmentation. What you see here is a site where we've actually used machine learning and artificial intelligence to draw out and help us see where vegetation is. So it was a machine, not a man, who went in and actually drew the lines to show us where the vegetation exists. Why is that important? Well, there's a number of reasons it's important. First off, in the case of segmentation, you may have certain wildlife preservation regulations around where you're working. You want to make sure that you know how to identify and track changes in that, that um, vegetation over time. It could be that you have a piece of property and you want to make sure that the fire hazards aren't increasing too much and you want to, again, be able to quickly in an automated way tell what is vegetation and what is not. So you can also take this and apply it to trucks, vehicles, any types of other identifiable sources. So we use our training sets to help teach the algorithms how to identify different types of objects. And that allows us to, in an automated way, take those out and provide greater insight. Another way that we go and we drive deep learning into the tools that we have are the deep convolutional neural networks. And let me show you how we use this in one of our, our use cases. Here I'm going to show you, this is a, an, an RGB uh, image of a quarry. We are able to combine that with a digital surface model, which gives us altitude. And by taking these inputs and putting them into our deep learning model, we're able to come up with, you know, high wall class heat map. And that is what fuels what I showed you earlier in that demo, our ability to show the toes and crests and measure a high wall. We're actually doing that behind the scenes using these deep convolutional neural networks to give us the information. And they only get smarter over time as we have greater and greater depth to our training sets to be able to advance the, the competency of the algorithms. Another type of system that we're looking at is generative adversarial networks, or GANs. This is something we haven't yet incorporated into our tools, but researchers are making great progress and they're now able to turn 2D images into 3D models. And they can do that by adding in sketching in rivers and then adding crest lines, and then adding in elevations. And through how the algorithms work, they can now build a true th 3D model. And in a space like ours, what this allows is for us to do future modeling. So we know what the site looks like today with great accuracy. Now we can add on and simulate what it will look like in the future which opens up a whole set of opportunities to do future state modeling for how somebody might evolve their particular business. A stockpile. I doubt many of you would have the opportunity to go visit a stockpile. So let's take a closer look. As you can see, there's lots of equipment in this picture. 
not all the stockpiles are in the same footing. And so in the past, people did their best estimate. They might measure these based on truckloads of material out um, or people manually guessing what they look like. And a lot of advanced calculations went into spreadsheets. What we're able to do through interpolation is to actually figure out what the volumes and the measurements are with different types of scenarios, be a stockpile against a high wall in an interesting location on the site where it may not have that level footing. And so again, we're using machine learning and AI to give us a higher level of accuracy to these situations, to these measurements. Another thing that we're doing is we're using geographic information systems or GIS simulations. What's fascinating is because we know the elevation, because we know specifically how that elevation changes all across a site, we can now determine what the hydrology of that site is. We can determine what the pooling and where the water flow will happen. So what you see here is we can actually look and understand how water might run then we can run simulations that will show us exactly what will happen with different volumes of water falling. This is particularly important in areas that might have significant changes in the, the weather throughout the year and they wanna know when they build it, what will be the impacts? Are there risks of flooding? Do they have the right drainage to handle different volumes of water? In fact, we also use some of these simulations to determine things such as if a tsunami were to hit, who would be impacted? How far would the damage happen? So there's many useful ways that we can take and use simulations now that we have the base models with such degrees of accuracy. The final area I wanna talk through is where we're using some deep learning models, in this case with thermal imaging, to detect where we might have water damage. So you can see from the thermal imaging, you can tell the different the different heat that's generating from the roof. And we can start to identify where there are challenges. And as you look through, as we go through the video, you can see the color that helps you identify where damages might be. Those can then be classified in terms of the, the, the degree of um, severity. And then you can go and see in the actual image, the challenge. These types of tools can be used by rooftop inspectors, by property management companies, to identify problems before they happen. And you don't have to put somebody on the roof to do it. In fact, one of, one of the folks we know, they had several fatalities because people were up on roofs, somebody fell through a skylight. Now, not only do you have to, not only can you avoid climbing on a roof, but you actually can get better information that historically was not possible. And you can apply these types of models against it. Now, I've spent a fair amount of time talking about you know, how we're using these simulations, these capabilities, but let me share with you some of the real world impact. Let some of the folks who are out there using these technologies in these unexpected places, how they're getting value. This first is an exclusive interview that was done on, on Newswatch Channel 7, and it's about the Orville Dam repair. Any construction professional uh, is an innovator. Inside a room dedicated to just that. It's here where employees tell us it would have taken three weeks to survey the Oroville site. You're putting people in harm's way. With the drone, we can get in about three hours. The construction company doesn't just find drone technology more efficient, but also knows it can gather more data, measuring precisely how much material is in this pile, for example, or the grade of roads on the job site. And it would take days for us to go in there and actually have somebody model this up by hand. Then there's augmented reality. You can put these glasses on and stand over the Oroville job site. What I'm looking at on the floor is shown in the monitor. It can help teams located in different parts of the country work through an issue together. For example, you can be in Denver, I can be in Omaha. We can be looking at the same thing and collaborate on the same project. And a lot of construction professionals taking skills honed here to projects around the world. So as you can see, a lot of the tools and techniques that we've already talked about are being applied in real live use cases. And they're going from being an innovation to scale out. We've talked about some of them, how they measured the stockpiles, the drainage, 
the, the area segmentation. We're also using bespoke analytics to figure out the haul roads as they showed you. And what's interesting is some of the most meaningful insights are yet to come. What we're finding is we can integrate other data streams into the understanding that we have geospatially to get even further insights. So we've started looking at how we can integrate the machine telemetry from some of the large machines that you saw driving around the site and start to better understand their performance in the context geospatially. And then to measure that against predictive models of what it should be. All to help us focus on how can we do our jobs better, faster, and more safely. Let me give you another real world example. This is one that comes from a very different industry. And you may not think there's a lot of commonality across residential insurance or property insurance and mines and construction. But there actually is. They're all physical worlds that need to be digitized. And let's hear how that happens in this space. I've been in the insurance business for 15 years. It's quite fulfilling because of the fact you get the opportunity to help people. You go on after hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, and you arrive on the scene to help them to get back on their feet. Anytime you get on a ladder, there's always a possibility the ladder could slide up from you and cause you serious injury. I was up right near the gate with the ridge, the scaffolding kicked out from underneath us, and we fell about 32 feet. Falling off a ladder, it's like a dream. It's like when you fall off a cliff. I saw the bottom coming closer and closer, and when I hit it, I hit it so hard I bounced. Hello. Hello, Jay. Yes. Hey, yeah. Thomas. How you doing, Thomas? Nice house you have. We found a leak in the pantry, which is on the roof. Okay. Just up here. It's amazing. I mean, that uh, I didn't have to get on a roof to so see this. <laughs> there you go. It's been patched before. So that's where your leak is. I would do every house on this corner. <laughs> it took five minutes to fly the drone for something that would have taken me an hour to inspect on my feet. And it's more complete. If I had a drone, I wouldn't need a ladder. I definitely wouldn't need the use of measuring tools. I wouldn't need a roller wheel. I wouldn't need tape measure. And that's great. Ten years ago, a drone would have saved me a lot of trouble. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have fell off the ladder. <laughs> So one of the things that I really value about the Jay and the story that he tells is, you know, clearly there's many meaningful ways that he can use technology to help him do his job better. And to me personally, the story of him falling off a two story steep house, I don't quite know why he says it was like a dream because it certainly wouldn't be a dream to me. Um, but, but it really brings home in a personal way how technology can be used to advance society in powerful ways, which I feel is really important because many people are concerned about the jobs that it will take away. But as Jay talks about, it's actually freeing him up. He doesn't need to do the physical work of climbing up a roof, of measuring with you know, tapes and, and pencils he's able to apply his knowledge to the problem site to be able to identify it was a faulty patch in the roof. And we're continuing to help him out by doing things like looking at some of the following areas. We talked about the thermal and again, the segmentation and the applicability in this world in those areas. As we mentioned, he doesn't need to do rooftop measurement anymore but again, where machine learning and AI are really helping out is not only in how we automatically classify and more accurately measure the roof, but also in visual damage detection. And so, for example, I didn't know this, but apparently people historically have tried to simulate hail damage by using a golf ball and a hammer. And we can now use machine learning and AI to detect the difference of the pattern that somebody might physically make on a roof trying to simulate hail damage to what mother nature will automatically do. And the accuracy of this only gets better over time. So it's in quite powerful, not only what we can do today, but I think most excitingly what we can do in the future that we can take and continue to advance that our, 
our different industries around the globe will find new ways in terms of what we can do. And ultimately, the way that I look at it is the fact that drones are allowing us to digitally create a new normal for how people understand and engage with the physical world. And that new normal is a digitized parallel twin that we can now apply additional technologies to. And I'm confident that as we do that, the richness of the insights that we get from that technology will only advance. And the new ways that we, have, we find to apply our own capabilities and skills will continue to advance in parallel. Thank you so much for going on this journey with me. That was Yvonne Wassena, CEO at Airware. We'll now take a short networking break, but don't go anywhere. We'll be back here at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We'd also love to get your opinion on the future of AI and intelligent enterprise. So please join in our live polls, which you can access in the menu bar at the top of your screen. If you haven't had a chance yet, make sure you check out our exhibit hall where you can chat to industry experts and download free resources to take home in your swag bag. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back shortly. <laughs>